When it comes to using the click track or the metronome in PreSonus Studio One, there's so much more that you can do with a click rather than just turning it on or off. Today's video, I wanna give you a deep dive into PreSonus Studio One's click track and ways that you can manipulate the click track when you're recording music. There's an interview with John Mayer that was done recently where he was talking about using backing tracks in his live performances. Something that's kind of a little bit of an argument among purists or musicians. He said that backing tracks are kind of something that are negotiable, but click track is a non-negotiable thing. If you're making modern music, you really need to be recording to a click track. Unless, like I said, if you're some sort of purist or you just wanna have that vibe, feel free to pass along. But if you're looking to advance your skills with the click track, today's video is for you. My name's Chris Green. I have this YouTube channel here. This actually comes from a comment of someone watching my videos who just needed help with the metronome or the click track. So here it is. Hope this video is helpful to you. Just ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Let's jump into PreSonus Studio One. I'm running PreSonus Studio One Professional. This is version six. This is the latest version of PreSonus Studio One. Many, if not everything I'm talking about in this video relating to the click track, if you're using version three, version four, or version five, I've had all of these previously before, these things should be applicable to you. So when you open up PreSonus Studio One, just so you know my setup here, I'm using this MacBook so I can be making this video facing the camera. I've got an RME Babyface Pro, it's a USB interface, and I've got a pair of headphones so I can be hearing what y'all are hearing as well. So on the setup screen, make sure that you got your interface selected and then hit new session. We'll call this one click track. Speaking of headphones, make sure you have a closed back pair of headphones. This is going to prevent what's called click bleed. Click bleed is when a vocalist or a musician is recording something on PreSonus Studio One and you can actually hear the click coming out of the headphones and into the microphone. Click bleed is usually a really bad thing. We don't want any of that. So get yourself some closed back headphones or some in-ear monitors so that sound is isolated. If you have a pair of open back headphones or you have a pair of headphones that don't isolate very well, people are gonna start hearing the click track on your recordings. So make sure you got that figured out. So whenever you have an empty session on PreSonus Studio One, the first thing I want you to know is that you can hit the C key as a shortcut for the click track. There's an icon at the bottom of the screen that looks like a metronome. If it is highlighted blue, that means the click track is on and you should be hearing the click track whenever you play or record music. If you hit the C key, it will turn gray. If it's gray, it means that it's muted. So if you're not hearing the click track, hit the C key and make sure the icon is blue. I'm gonna go over here to the browse button. I usually close out this browse to begin with. You can hit the mix tab and over on your main fader, before you have any tracks going into PreSonus Studio One, right here, hidden next to the metronome icon, this is our overall volume adjustment for the click track. So if you click and hold this little icon, it brings up a small fader. That fader can be brought up in volume or down depending on how loud the click track is. So I'm gonna put my headphones on and let's take a listen. Like I said, I've got an empty session here on PreSonus Studio One. I'm just gonna hit the space bar and let's take a listen to the click track. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up and down the overall volume of the click track. One of the things I wanna to recommend to you is that you actually have the click track volume set to somewhere around negative 18, okay? I believe it's negative 18. Yeah, the closer you can get to negative 18, the better. A lot of times when you're starting off on PreSonus Studio One, the click track is way too loud. The click track is almost just hitting zero dB on the meter. It's way too loud. You're gonna have a lot of problems with click bleed. So go ahead and adjust the overall volume of the click track down to something around negative 18 you'll find this is a lot easier to record to. So when you're recording an instrument, if it's not very loud, if you're recording someone singing, bring the click track volume down to negative 18. The next thing I wanna talk about is how we can actually change the sound of the click track. So if you don't like the sound of the click, you want it to sound like something else, there's a little wrench icon next to the metronome. If you click that, you have a new window, and now we can adjust the actual sounds that we're hearing. 
The first section is called accent. So accent is gonna be the downbeat of each measure. Should be the first sound that you hear, and I can go ahead and change that for you. So right now it's set to a clav or a clave. Let's change that to a beep and take a listen. Now you can spend your own time looking through this list and putting in sounds. You can also add your own sounds. So if you wanna create your own personalized or unique click track, you can actually add your own samples to this list. I've always just used the built-in sounds that come default. Check out the ones called Tools 1 and Tools 2. I believe that this is something that's reminiscent of Avid Pro Tools. Also, there's one that's called Logical 1 and Logical 2. I believe that that might be referencing Logic. So if you're coming over from one of those other DAWs, try and use those as well. I happen to like the sound of Tools 1 and Tools 2. So my accent is gonna be Tools 1, my beat is Tools 2. This song is in 4-4, so whatever time signature you have, that's gonna determine how many beats there are in each measure. But the main beat, if I'm in 4-4, each of my quarter notes is gonna have the sound Tools 2. Let's take a listen to that. Now next to each of these names, the accent, the beat, and offbeat, you have these faders. So what you can do is manipulate the sound, how loud each sample is coming through. The accent, typically you want the accent to be louder than the beats, but you feel free to adjust that however you'd like for it to be. I have accent around the 75% mark, beat is about 50%. I don't commonly use the offbeat, so in 4-4 the offbeat is gonna be the eighth note. I don't usually use the offbeat, but I want you to be able to hear what that sounds like. So here is my accent, beat, and offbeat. The offbeat's gonna be sound of a click. Here we go. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now, another thing I would say is that it also depends on how fast the song you're playing is. Right now, this song is set to 68 beats per minute. That's really slow. Anything that's slower than 80 beats per minute, you might wanna make use of the offbeat. If I change this time signature to something like 120, something like 120, my personal taste, I think the offbeat is a little too much, so I'd want the offbeat to be turned off. So 120 beats per minute, hearing the accent and the beat, this is what it sounds like. Okay, now if you wanna save this preset, it's got options for storing or loading your own preset. You can have different presets set up for different singers. Certain singers are gonna to wanna to hear a certain type of click track. You've also got options for tambourines and cowbells, stuff like that as well. Let's keep on moving. The pre-count box. Pre-count is pretty useful because if you're recording, let's say we're up here at measure four, a pre-count is actually gonna count before we start recording. So if I normally have the pre-count off and I hit the record button, you'll see that the playhead just begins to start moving. Okay, so that was measure four. If I turn on the pre-count and I hit record, watch what happens to the playhead. So what the pre-count is doing is it's essentially not moving the playhead and it's counting you in. The same effect you'd have of a drummer was saying one, two, three, go starts playing. You can adjust how long the pre-count is over here where it says bars. You can make a pre-count that has four bars. That's extremely long. I don't recommend that at all, but just so you can take a listen. And then it starts recording. Okay, that's way too long. I'm just gonna leave this at one bar. Pre-roll, the difference between pre-roll and pre-count. So pre-count is just counting you into the measure. Pre-roll will actually move the playhead backwards in time and play some of the material that comes before. So this is be, this would be pretty uh, useful when you're recording instruments. If I go back to measure four, watch what happens to the playhead when I hit record. So the playhead actually moved back one full measure and did a pre-roll, so I'm able to hear the material that's coming up to where I want to record. 
With this technique, I'm gonna actually keep it on pre-count for my personal taste. I would rather use something that's called auto punch. I made a video about that on my channel. If I'm recording something very specific and I need to hear the material leading up to that moment, I'm just gonna use the auto punch function rather than pre-roll. If you want to make use of the pre-roll, you can hit the O key on your keyboard. That will turn on pre-roll, hit the O key again to turn off pre-roll. So C is for muting and unmuting the click track. O is for having a pre-roll, hit the O key again to remove the pre-roll function. Now, some of these other options at the bottom, I don't recommend you change any of these. Click in play, I always leave this on because whenever I'm playing the music, I can just hit the C key on the keyboard to mute the click. The problem that will happen is you start to second guess, do I have the click muted? Is it unmuted? I just keep it on all the time. If you're mixing a song, you probably don't need the click track because you're not recording any new material. I can just hit the C key on the keyboard to mute or unmute. The last thing I wanna mention is this render button at the top of the metronome. So again, to access all this stuff, just hit the wrench key next to the metronome. The render function is pretty useful because if you need to save your click track or export your click track to its own track, you can use the loop region, like I'll highlight measures two through five, okay? So two, three, four, and five, Let's say I've got a click track on that. If I hit the render button, I can render either from the start to the end of the song or what I often use is between the loop range if I hit okay. Now PreSound Studio One has generated a brand new audio track. It's not the click anymore, it is a click track. And now I can manipulate this click track just like I would if it were an instrument. So if I mute the click and I go back to measure one, you shouldn't hear any click at all except for what's happening on the actual audio track that was rendered. So hit spacebar. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, you may be in a situation where you have multiple tempos happening in your song, or maybe you don't wanna deal with having to mute and unmute the click track. I mentioned this in one of my other videos. If you have a singer, who is recording vocals to a track that already has instruments, especially if the instruments are giving some sort of rhythm or beat, you may not need the click track at all. But what you could do is you can render a click track on the sections where the vocalist is not singing at all. That way, if it's in the middle of an instrumental or a solo section where the vocalist is just waiting around, you can kind of remind the vocalist that the click track is there, that we're trying to stay on tempo, and then when it's the time for the singer to sing, they don't hear the click track anymore. So you can render that to its own track, manipulate it as you wish. You can also go in with this and do tempo changes. If you wanna render a click track at 60 beats per minute, and then later in the song, you wanna render out something that's 68 beats per minute, well now you can do that as well. With all that being said, I hope that's given you some ideas on how you can use the metronome or the click track in PreSonus Studio One. Again, this all came about from a comment that was left on one of my videos about using the click track in PreSonus Studio One. So feel free to leave a comment and who knows, I might be able to make a video specific for your needs. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you next time.